With global warming increasing to a point beyond return, we are at a point where we have a disproportionate ratio of people living on Earth versus the land available to sustain them. Land is becoming more expensive to cultivate to produce food and energy in a world of depleting resources but with increasing needs. Could the solution be as easy as fusing the two together? Let's take a look at the ingenious concept of agrivoltaic farming. Firstly, a unique solution presents itself. One result of the Conservative leadership election in the UK this summer was a two-month period of total leadership absence at the top level of the government. The UK waited on its knees while the rest of Europe tucked away their gas supplies for the gloomy winter that lay ahead. As a result, the nation is entering its biggest energy crisis since the 1970s with only nine terawatt hours of gas stored. In the race for the Tory leadership, rival candidates agreed that they wanted to see farmers produce food without covering their fields with solar panels. They pledged to maintain their commitment to utilizing those fields for food production and to ensure that Britain wouldn't lose its valuable agriculture. However, if any of the candidates' hordes of researchers had bothered to research a bit on new farming technologies, they might have discovered an effective solution, agrivoltaic farming, the future of our planet. Next, how can we converge these crises? Numerous destabilizing disasters continue to affect the world economy. Rising food and energy costs are a result of the more than two years of the COVID-19 outbreak and the ensuing crisis in Ukraine, which had an impact on global commodities markets, supply chains, and inflation. This means that food and energy instability is rapidly spreading throughout the world, especially in light of the severe consequences of climate change and the consequent decline in yields of incoming harvests. Agri-food systems have the potential to become one of the most promising approaches to combating climate change, as well as eradicating poverty and ensuring universal access to food. With the correct investments, innovation, and cooperation, they could be the answer we need. There are a number of agri-food technologies that, if scaled up, could support a more favorable food future and increase the effectiveness of the food system, particularly in times of crisis. For instance, according to the WEF, off-grid renewable energy generation could increase farmer income by up to $100 billion by 2030, while precision agriculture might reduce water use by more than 5%. However, the anticipated finance deficit for innovation in food systems is $15.2 billion. To address issues with the world's agri-food systems, this brought together scientists, policymakers, and professionals from the entire world. The expansion and adoption of relevant innovation can be aided by financial investment in agri-food technology technology manufacturing, which will also advance the current food systems. Moving on to, agrivoltaic farming is the way to go. Agrivoltaic farming is one ag tech option that has the potential to significantly assist the food and energy industries. It essentially involves integrating solar photovoltaic projects into an agricultural activity so that the same piece of land may be used for both. Agriculture and renewable energy have a significant potential to work together to minimize global greenhouse gas emissions, protect biodiversity, reduce reliance on imported fossil fuels, and boost agricultural production. The sharing of sunlight between the two energy conversion processes, photovoltaics and photosynthesis, is the defining feature of agrivoltaics. It effectively imitates what people have been doing with agroforestry for hundreds of years. It purposely provides some shade, like shade-grown coffee, to produce many layers of agricultural productivity on the same plot of land. We can simultaneously boost the production of renewable energy sources and agriculture without having to fight for land. Up next, types of agrivoltaic technologies. Crops can be shielded from the impact of bad weather by solar shade, which also lowers evapotranspiration and keeps the soil moist. This can stop desertification or assist in replanting deserted areas. Depending on the amount of shading, solar shading could save 14 to 29 percent of water, according to Solar Power Europe. In a future with longer and more severe droughts, the strategy might give food production a much-needed boost. Agrivoltaics come in a variety of forms, but the optimum strategy will depend on the climate and land use practices of the region. For example, elevated PV panels can be used in association with large crops and harvests. On the other hand, low-height crops and livestock can be paired with big ground-mounted PV arrays. By making it simple for animals to find shade and allowing for the planting of grasses between and beneath them for grazing, the panels can improve animal welfare too. Intentional provision of a range of ecosystem services is another potential presented by agrivoltaics. Some of the services it could provide are habitat construction, support for beneficial insects like bees, restoration of natural vegetation, and use of cover crops for soil health and carbon sequestration. Agri Agrivoltaics, which involves strategically shading the ground, frequently makes the most sense in regions with an abundance of sunlight and a lack of water, such as the U.S. Southwest. Let's take a look at some examples of agrivoltaic projects. Throughout the U.S., there are numerous agrivoltaic projects. Researchers from the University of Maine are investigating the effects of solar panels set up across 11 acres of blueberry farming in Rockport, Maine. Farmers in Grafton are collaborating with the University of Massachusetts to determine which crops thrive in the shadow provided by solar panels. Growing crops between conventional utility-scale solar PV panels that are not elevated is being tested by researchers at Oregon 
Washington State University, and Jack Solar Garden in Longmont, Colorado has become the largest commercially active agrivoltaics research site in the nation. One of the best examples of the strategy in Europe is an agrophotovoltaic demonstration project created by the Italian utility NL Green Power. The testing that is now being done uses a range of solar technologies, panels, and configurations to assess the effects of various agricultural activities. The crops include food plants like vegetables and legumes, cosmetic plants like aloe, fodder plants, and flowering plants to draw pollinators, as well as aromatic, therapeutic, and medical herbs. Future integrated projects that modernize and incorporate solar technology into local farming would greatly benefit from the data gained from these experimental installations in order to increase their competitiveness. By boosting the capacity for renewable energy, we can do this and increase the local agriculture sector's resilience while also decarbonizing it. Agrivoltaic installations on just 10% of farms in Germany with exceptionally favorable conditions might meet about 9% of the nation's electricity needs. Just 85,000 hectares would mean that only 0.7% of German farmable land would be occupied by that. Moving on to, the solution is still in its initial stages. Agrivoltaic's future path is not without problems. The key problem will be developing a management model for farming operations and the maintenance of these PV plants. These systems would then need to be readily replicated and scaled up, as many of the attractive initiatives are still in the experimental stage. Public incentives will be necessary to draw in business interest and expand the sector. Agrivoltaic implementation should also be aided by accelerated licensing, as we sorely need this technology to be implemented as soon as possible. However, one of the main obstacles is cost, as raising PV panels might become more and more expensive as a result of rising steel and installation labor costs. The agrivoltaic system's compatibility with current agricultural methods is the next significant problem that arises. The only way agrivoltaics will be successful is if farmers are motivated to farm the plot with little inconveniences. The majority of solar systems today are not made with farmers in mind, and many agrivoltaic installations already in place do not have as many farmer-friendly features as farm owners would like. To overcome that obstacle, involving farmers more in the design process of agrivoltaics and allowing them to contribute to revisions will be quite helpful. Finally, how will this help to reach net zero emissions? Agrivoltaics are destined to play a crucial part in the net zero transition through the use of solar power. This means that in order to entirely eliminate the number of greenhouse gases created by human activity, this solution is necessary. This is accomplished by lowering emissions and putting strategies in place to remove atmospheric carbon dioxide. They enable the growth of solar energy in places where there would otherwise be opposition to the development of renewable energy, such as rural communities in Britain. The potential to support both electricity and agriculture on the same piece of land is actually provided by agrivoltaics, which is advantageous to many parties at once. Unless there are improvements in how to scale up agrivoltaic crop production without significantly raising the cost of solar construction, the significance of these crop-producing sites will rise over time, especially close to urban areas where the product can easily access upscale food distribution outlets. In conclusion, agrivoltaic farming appears to have a promising future. According to Solar Power Europe, AgriSolar's technological capability would be more than 900 gigawatts if it were just used on 1% of Europe's arable land. There is a tremendous possibility here, and the market is just getting started. That's a wrap for this video, and thanks for watching. What did you think of the agrivoltaic solution to the food and energy crisis? And should the world be adopting this strategy? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.